Welcome to the MIB Podcast, where we help you chase your dreams side by side. And now, your hosts, Mike and Talia Osborne. What's up, everybody? This is Mike. And Talia. We just wanted to welcome you to the MIB Podcast. <laughs> Hope everybody's having a good day today. This is episode number three. We're glad you're joining us here today and here our second half of our roller coaster ride. This is the part where it's you're at the very top and everything's looking great and ah, oh, we come off the tracks and everybody dies and somehow we get back up. And, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but this is funny. But uh, before we get there, uh, just a couple different uh, announcements. Please follow us on Facebook, facebook.com slash MIB podcast. And you can also check us out on our website, themibpodcast.com. If you have any questions or comments, we'd love to hear from you at info at themibpodcast.com. Yep. Got anything to tell us? Give us some love. Let us know what you think about the show, anything you want to hear. Um, like I said, this is going to be a lot about different ways of being an entrepreneur, uh, working together as a team, as a married couple, if you're both doing the same business or not. And, you know, we, we really like a little bit of guidance on wh what you're looking for. Um, we have a lot of good ideas of what we think we want to talk about on this podcast. But you know, for now, you know, we're just going to give you the best advice we can give you based off our success, our failures, and uh, things that we're learning along the way. So there's a lot to this. Um, did you have something to say? Yeah, I just wanted to say I hope you're having a great week in your business. And, you know, business for us is going really good right now. We've got a lot of inventory going in. Uh, we've rekindled some old partnerships, um, but you know what? Here in Maine, I don't know where you're at, but it is cold. Yeah, it is cold. Really I'm, I literally wear like two to three layers a day, <laughs> and then we have you know the four kids and Mike, and so doing laundry it's really hard to keep up with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's a lot of work. You know, it's really, really, really tough. So, but yeah, luckily business is going very, very well. So. Um, and it's not snowing on the ground. Oh, it's snowing right now, which is always good. <laughs> but it's, it's coming. <laughs> always snowing. But we, we did, we'll go ahead and jump into business. Our, our second half of our story is going to go today. Uh, on episode two, we ended up at the point of where I quit my job. Uh, we became full-time entrepreneurs together, full-time a self-employed couple. Um, at that point, I guess we didn't say it, but we were a sole, um, what, sole proprietorship. We moved into an S corporation uh, for tax advantages. Um, same thing. Uh, we're not tax consultants or anything, so talk to your CPA. But um, at that point, it, you know, we started taking a full-on paycheck. Um, not a full like we could took more. We always had extra, always extra that we were looking to put in different things. But this was a time where we were free. And we we're going to conquer the freaking world, right? Yep. So at that point, I went out there and we started uh, just beating the streets, trying to take. We literally took a business that we were working with, well, was working by 40 hours a week easily by herself. <laughs> yeah, and then me helping on the weekends. And then together with the synergy of us both, both working, uh, working together, we probably had this thing down to what, 15 hours a week? 15 to 20, depending on how yeah. much inventory we had or how far we had to drive to get it. Yeah. Um, we were at Disney every weekend. We yeah, had a I mean, great schedule. We usually went during the week, just me and Talia uh, at the time, the you know, one and a half, two year old. Yep. Yeah, so I mean, things were going pretty freaking good. Yeah. Uh, we're really excited, uh, but then I had a lot of free time, so I started coming up with no, more ideas and different ways to diversify our business. You know, a training course um, that we never put together. We actually we finished it a couple of days ago. <laughs> two years later, we put it together. A, uh, man, a few. Oh, I'm not going to tell you these are my ideas. So I'm going to tell you, <laughs> but I have about 12 logos of things that I wanted to get started. Right, a teaching point there, right there. Do not if you focus on everything, you won't get anything done. Yeah. Right. So we filled up, I filled up all my free time with other things instead of just pounding this business. But things are going good. You know, we're averaging a lot of money. And uh, per month, $35,000, I think we're averaging per month in sales. And uh, we're, we're just killing it. Yeah. And 30, obviously, 35000 you know, do the math. We don't keep all that. And we didn't pay ourselves even what we potentially could have paid ourselves. Right. A very strong because we're still income. trying to conquer the world and yeah. you know still reinvesting into our business so at a high time, volume <laughs> so at the time what we launched uh we, ne we had a bunch of companies we never launched a training course we didn't launch and, uh, <laughs> a private label company we did launch and 
I won't go too far into that because I want to tell that story at another date, and it's a pretty funny one. It's a very good, another roller coaster ride. But uh, yeah, we're just running around being crazy, just having fun. And, you know, things were going really good. I mean, all the way up until right before the baby is born at the end of July, we had everything down to a system of just boom, 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 you know, get exactly everything done. Do. Yeah. Yep. yep. Just left, right, uppercut every time, right? Yep. But then we have our fourth daughter. And we find out, you know, we're in the hospital a few days. Uh, and then, man, just, it was just, I think you're just, because you get overwhelmed when you have a situation, a big life situation happen like that, right? Because mm -hmm. then I came home and Ty is on bed rest because, you know, C-section and all this other stuff, and it made it a little bit hard again. <laughs> yeah, I mean, in, in any partnership, you have to figure out your strengths and your weaknesses and work towards those, and everybody has something that's different. So Mike and I are used to picking up the slack for each other. So I know what I'm good at. He knows what he's good at. And we, we kind of work off of each other like that. But when one's down, you have to take one for the team and kind of figure things out. But, you know, after the baby, we are pretty much maxed out at about $400,000 for our company a year. Yeah. You probably and just couldn't get anything any more any done further, yeah. Yeah, without doing a, a ton more work. Without putting in 80 hours a week. Without and all that, banning yeah. our children to the TV. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, watch the babysitter. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, we had this great idea. We had four kids. You know, what? what is something we could do? Hmm. We could start a warehouse. <laughs> we could go out there and hire people. And, of course, it's going to be me and you. And mm -hmm. we'll have three other people probably, right? Yeah. Um, so we should be yeah. able to at least double what we're yeah, so doing. So if we're doing thirty-five thousand, my goal was to do a hundred thousand dollars in sales per month. Um, only problem was, like I said, we were saving a lot of money. We we're putting money into different things, private labeling, uh, different ideas. Uh, so we didn't have a lot of money saved up. And what was there, we didn't want to use it all for this. And ding, ding, ding! Oh, one day we check out Amazon, and <laughs> Amazon Lending offers us twenty-nine thousand dollars. <laughs> Oh man, no, a twenty nine thousand dollar loan over a six month period. So even better. But you know what we knew? We could take that thirty grand, and this is in August. Yeah, August time frame. So literally, we could take that thirty grand and turn it to a hundred thousand dollars, even maybe one hundred fifty by the end of Christmas, right? Yeah. Plus, we knew that Mike also had an eBay business that he was running. Oh yeah, I forgot and about he that. He was he was making right right around five grand. Five which, grand a month. Which would cover all of our utilities for the new office and warehouse, even employees, and the, the three, employees, three part-time employees. Yep, the three employees that we hired. So we were we were golden. We knew exactly yeah. what we were doing. I forgot about that I until was, I put that eBay business out of my mind. Dun dun dun. <laughs> about a week. I don't know. It might have been a couple. Two weeks. weeks yeah, I think. a couple weeks. Right. <laughs> Got hit by a hurricane. A couple weeks later, uh, the eBay business gets shut down. Like literally, just was no warning. No warning. Literally, you're shut down. And uh, a little golden nugget for anybody that's in eBay: if you're making a lot of money, they still don't care, <laughs> and they will shut you down for you know even stuff you don't even mean to do wrong. In my case, I was canceling Deadbeats <laughs> bids after seven days that they didn't pay, and they looked at that like I was the one doing something wrong, not them. <laughs> um, I know better now, but I mean, yeah, they forever. I hate them. <laughs> I mean, it's like one day, like boom, sixty thousand dollars of income gone. Yeah. And this was more or less, like I said, this was our safety net, right? So we took that thirty grand that Am Amazon lent us, our five thousand dollar a month, um, yeah, loan payment, and we put all that money into uh, stuff right away, right? Mm -hmm. All into new product and everything else. Uh, yeah. We were getting a lot of our items at that time from once an online supplier, where we were buying these Amazon return lots. Remember that? Yep. So we're buying tons of these. I'm talking thousands of dollars of these every week. And um, it was going great because we're getting them for cheap. We're getting tons of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, the only problem we hit was they decided to tell everybody that they were Amazon return lots. And we knew that because we had bought these and figured it out, right? Mm -hmm. And then they went and told everybody. So the price of a lot went from like a pallet, like 200 bucks to like God, four or five. Yeah, yeah four or 500 bucks. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So double. So we get this warehouse. We get these lazy. I won't say that they're good people, but <laughs> we just we just happened to hire the first three people that we interviewed. Yeah. 
And that's a, a lesson learned for us and hopefully a lesson learned for you that you don't hire people just because you're desperate or you want to get something started. You hire the right people for the right position. And so we did not hire the right people for the right position. We just hired three people, <laughs> warm bodies, and it, it backfired on us. You know, we had to fire people. Some people had to quit, you know, um, some people had issues <laughs> and we won't go into that, but um, it makes for funny stories now. <laughs> oh yeah, such funny ones. So we ha we put thirty grand in the business. I don't know. Like to this day, I don't know what the heck happened because we went from having a business that did like thirty five thousand dollars a month in sales consistently to boom, our first bump was up to forty five thousand, <laughs> and then boom, forty two thousand. Like what the heck is going on? Like we literally finished the year. We're like, I don't know what's happening here. It's just I guess the you can do all the math in your head, but you don't take in uh, a fact uh, like, oh, how about your supplier, you know, cuts your profits in basically half? Or, hey, how about if, you know, that supplier is now, you know, doing other things and, you know, screws you over? You know, it was not their fault. I mean, it was just our fault. They're just trying to make money. But, you know, this is things you have to keep, you know, in account for, you know, and you never thought that <laughs> it would do that. So we had to be pretty creative there with three employees try and figure it out and we well, obviously we got nowhere near to the hundred thousand dollar a month um, goal that we had so yeah it was uh, pretty 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 ugly for a while uh, to the point where I think we end up in right around what is it, January so at this point we're doing pretty well like it's not doing too bad we paid off fifteen thousand dollars of the of the uh, loan we had fifteen thousand dollars more and then the best thing on earth happened to you that could happen. What is that? <laughs> so we get the infamous Amazon email that says you're shut down. <laughs> <laughs> and we didn't know why. So we read the email. It had something to do with the product we had purchased while purchasing one of the lots from Amazon. Um, the, the maker of the item claimed that we had counterfeited their item and was selling it which was not true but that's what they said so when once you get shut down there is a very specific way that you have to get unlocked which it took us about 50 emails to Amazon over to, two weeks yeah over a two-week period to figure out in the meantime we had no income because yeah. eBay was shut down and now Amazon yeah still got the employees and you know luckily a couple of them uh, let themselves go and yeah, it was pretty rough. We were doing a lot of different things to make money we were taking we opened up our doors and we're having these like almost like a garage sale every Saturday We'd open up doors and that was going well and um, Well enough and then all of a sudden we started a Facebook group and started selling live and that actually turned out to be a, a great business for another person because uh, Yeah, it. we ended up selling that company to somebody else, but I mean it was man, it went from being on easy street to basically giving ourselves a full time job <laughs> that didn't pay, it paid worse. Yeah. And then, you know, Amazon shuts you down. So they, we weren't shut down for long. It was about two weeks. And then they, they let, they said, oh, yeah, no problem. You can have your account back. Uh, we're just not going to pay you until like our investigation's up. And we had proved that we did not do anything wrong, but they literally kept our account hostage where they said, no problem. You can give us inventory. We'll sell it for you. We're just not going to pay you for it. So luckily, they did that all the way to the point of we had no product or no inventory left in the warehouse. We had successfully paid them back their thirty thousand dollars, and now, yeah, our business is doing well. I, I, to me, I call it nothing, but it's still yeah. doing a couple thousand I mean, dollars a month. It's very surprising that it was still producing anything at that point because we literally did not have the money to put into the business. So <clears throat> we basically took a huge profitable business and drove it into the ground <laughs> yeah so then we told you remember half a million down to nothing again yeah it was it was very bad yeah but you know in in those moments where you are failing and falling on your face those are the times where you either pick your butt up and you figure some things out or you just crumble and so you know there were moments where one or two of us were crumbling but ultimately, you know, we figured out a different business model, um, which did not involve Amazon. 
but we were, as we said before, we were able to um, eventually sell it before we ended up moving again. And <clears throat> so we were figuring things out and we were hustling and we were grinding and trying to make money. And so we're, we decided, you know, we we're at another moment where we had to make a choice, you know, do we get a job or do we keep barely making it? And this was very, very, very hard for me to do. I mean, it was really, yeah, you, it's, it's very tough for somebody, especially I've, I've been, I've been the breadwinner for, you know, years and years and years. And like I said, I don't look at it like, you know, my, my wife had to stay home and, I, and she has a hard, hard job. But everything I always did, I really didn't enjoy, right? Mm -hmm. So I finally found something I really enjoyed doing. And now it's like, no, you have to go back and you have to answer somebody else. You have to eat lunch with or be hungry when they say you're hungry. Go to the bathroom when they say you can. It's just, man, I just, you know, I finally, I really felt like I'm finally over that point. And same thing, we had to suck it up and, you know, find a job. Yep. So couldn't find anything in Florida. Yeah. Mike looked and he looked and surprisingly enough, I ended up finding a job <laughs> by mistake. I really didn't want the job, but they hired me. And so I took it and it was very temporary because, you know, Mike was still looking and it, it didn't pay. They paid terribly. They didn't. Yeah. They weren't very uh, open with how much I was getting paid, but um, ultimately Mike it put some feelers out to, uh, yeah, back in Maine, you know, working here again for another contract, and I still was in great, uh, had great relationships with all the guys here, and luckily they did have an opening, and as soon as that opening came up, and, you know, they called me, and I left, so I left the family again, you know, to drive 1,500 miles to live in a hotel in Maine, <laughs> and this was about June of last year, and, you know, I had to do it by myself again, you know, we had a business that was paying us money, uh, you know, we didn't... You know, out of all of it, it got really, really bad, but never, it, we were always taken care of. Yeah, right? yeah. You so know, I mean, we look at small things now, like there could have, it could have went really, really, really bad. We we're, you know, we we're barely making ends meet, but we're still living in a great house in a great neighborhood. We were and, always you know, never missed a car them. payment, yeah. nothing like that, you know. And, you know, yeah, we have to be, you have to be thankful sometimes for the little things. A little bit of sunshine, right? <laughs> so I left, and uh, luckily, Taya got um, our lease was up anyway. So yeah. we got out of that, and uh, yeah, she came, I think, gosh, what was it? June, mid June. Yeah, mid June, July. Yeah. So at that point, our business finally dwindled down to like literally like nothing. So we had, had I think, our lowest paycheck was like 300 bucks, like 200 weeks or two weeks, I'm sorry. Yeah. And, uh, oof. That was rough. <laughs> but, yeah. you know, luckily I was making uh, a lot of money doing what I was doing, so it didn't matter. Um, and same thing, we, I was having overtime. So as soon as we got here, first thing we did was put money back in business and started doing the exact same thing we did before. Yeah. Right? So, you know, just to rewind a little bit, I just wanted to say that, you know, when you're on a team, you have to play the role that you need to play so that everyone can win. So it doesn't matter if it's a partnership with your husband or wife or your best friend or, you know, a colleague or whatever, you know, when your team needs you, you do what's necessary. So we had a role reversal there in our household for a little while. Mike was a stay at home dad with a little baby and, yeah. a, and a, a toddler. And I was the breadwinner for a little bit. And it's so a little bread. Yes. A very little piece of bread. <laughs> but, um, you know, general. we both did what we had to do, and but it also gave us a different perspective, I think, on each other's jobs. Yeah. Um. And so we're glad to be back together doing what we love. Um. You, but you skipped a bunch of stuff. I'm. I, well, obviously <laughs> they know that we're back. Hey, hey, hey! Okay. This is the we come back. We're going back up the hill now. Okay, Everybody going up the hill. Going that. up the hill. <laughs> yeah, so basically, uh, life sucks around June. We start rebuilding. We did exactly what we did before, except uh, this time, actually, we did very little thrifting. We did all new items. We did a lot of things that were, you know, we, people probably wouldn't do. We uh, Literally, we have, we probably have eight Walmarts in the state of Maine, and you have to drive an hour to get to each one. Mm -hmm. We did that. And we had, you know, a ton of... Uh, places we had to go, we go to Six Flags, you know, four hours away, more or less for an excuse to make 
all the shopping trips on the way over back. there, on the way back, right? <laughs> yeah. And we did that. And, you know, I worked 60 hours a week, every week for a while. And, you know, I'd come home and I'd help her do whatever she needed to do. Yeah. And, you know, we always tried to make sure that everything was taken care of and the business was growing. And, you know, steadily it just kept growing and growing and growing. And, and one thing yeah. that didn't change is that we took no pay again from our business. And we did that from June until basically December, almost January. Yeah. Um, just again, trying to ensure that our business wouldn't suffocate under the weight of us taking pay. You know, we knew we had Mike's income, so we were good. So we use that money to roll it over and roll it over and grow it. And so, you know, I think part of that is understanding your goals in your business and where you want to end up. If your goal is only $500 a month, then, you know, you know, you don't have to invest as much and you know, you don't have to continue to roll over as much, but if you have a bigger goal, then you have to understand what that means for you and your pay. Yeah, I think uh, I, I agree. You know, I couldn't agree more. You just have to, you have to be knowing where you want to go, you know? So our path was just making sure that we were, you know, taken care of that. Indeed, if I ever got laid off, you know, I expected to be there for a year and right around December, they gave me a nice, literally like five day notice that they're letting, it was letting a nice us go. Little Christmas present. Yeah. You know, we're December 15th, I think my last day. And you know, I looked at it. I'm like, well, should I go out and get a job? Should I not? I knew our business was killing it at that point. We're doing a thousand bucks a day in sales. So we we're already back up to that $30,000 a month. But I'm like, well, that's December, you know, it's fourth quarter. So, you know, it was very hard. We had to make the decision again. You know, what do I do? I wanted to pay off some debts. We didn't get to pay them all off. But you know what? We decided let's just take it a week at a time. Let's go for it. We took five months, rebuilt an entire business at six figure income. And, you know, <laughs> and now, you know, everything's good. <laughs> right now, we're recording this. It's almost February. It's uh, the 29th. And we couldn't be more excited, right? Yeah. Our business will do probably no less than $400,000 in sales this year maybe half a million depends on really how much we want to work yeah uh, we know that we can do that and maybe more um, but we are diversifying you know we did learn a little bit about the situation that you're not in control when somebody else and we love amazon don't get me wrong amazon we love you <laughs> if, you know but you're not you aren't in control you're running by their rules mm -hmm. using their platform and you know sometimes stuff just happens that's out of your control yep so we will diversify we're, we're going to talk about a lot of the different ideas that we're looking at as they develop. Yeah. And different people are different people that we'll, we'll bring on the show and talk to them about what they're doing, you know, to, to have different types of businesses at home and whatever. Um, hopefully married couples, maybe not. Um, just anybody. We honestly just want anybody that has to share an idea with you that can help you. Right. Yep. Yeah. That's what we're looking for. And you know, here's what we hope that you learn from our story. Um, failure is never the end. It's only the end if you stop. And so failure is a lesson. You know, we failed a lot <laughs> in that story. We learned a lot of lessons in that story. Um, and so we can look back now and we can tell you all the big potholes that are ahead of you if you go down the same path. We learned a lot and we hope to share a lot with you as we continue in this podcast. Yeah. Failure is not fatal unless it's final. So if you give up, yep. That's it. Yep. But if you don't, you keep on going, keep on pushing through, you know, learn to fail forward. It's, uh, you know, you, you can fix it. That's the thing. Yep. <laughs> you know, you, you lose a leg, sew it back on. <laughs> <laughs> so we're, we're excited today. We really are. I mean, it really was, I, I'm sure this whole podcast was just so confusing and trying to follow the crap that we went through. But, you know, just know that at the end of the day, you know, an entrepreneur, you can't stop a winner from winning. And I think, you know, we are a couple winners. We work really hard to be that way. We're not bragging. But we, we work our butt off. So I, I think it's funny when people tell me they can't get stuff done when, you know, you're single and, you know, you drink uh, 25 beers a day and you don't have any extra money. You can't start a business. But, I mean, literally just take your excuses, make them your reason, and, you know, go out there and take some action, get something done. Right? Yep. So we want to thank you for listening and for tuning in. We're excited about the next podcast coming out. You guys tune in with us, hang out with us, send us your questions at 
info at the MIB podcast.com. Go get us on Facebook. Facebook.com slash MIB podcast. We look forward to hearing from you and growing with you. Yeah, we appreciate you guys and uh, we hope you're getting something out of this. And please feel free to hit us up, all right? Love you. Bye.